peeps, welcome back to another video. Today it is part two of the McCall's 7945 Sew Along. And today we're going to be putting together the back panels, the facing, and this upper bodice portion of the dress. So let's get started. So I'm going to start sewing. I, of course, am not going to start with step one. I am going to go straight to making the ties. I actually want my ties to have an angled edge because that's just a look I prefer. So what I've done is I've used my seam gauge to mark in an inch from the raw edge, just made a line there, and then I've lined it up with, say, a quarter of an inch in from the bottom. And I'm going to be sewing this at three eighths of an inch. And when I get to this point, I'll pivot and then sew off of the end, and then I can trim all this excess off. As I've started a new project I have a brand new needle on I'm using a 70 universal needle this will work really well for the viscose you will need to use a needle that will be appropriate for the type of fabric you're using I'm going to trim down the excess seam allowance with my pinking shears and I'll try and keep it in frame this time and again not cut anything that I'm not meant to these ties as I say I've sewn this with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and the pattern actually has a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance I just prefer them to be a little bit bigger but that is my preference so if you want to sew them with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance feel free it's completely up to you so when it comes to this end I'm actually going to clip very close to the pivot point and take away the excess there and then I'm also going to clip close to the turned point there now again lots of people have lots of different ways that they like to turn things like this through for me personally I like to use a safety pin I'm going to put my safety pin through one side of the fabric or one side only Sean easier said than done when you've got fabric that close together put it through and pin it and then I'm going to start feeding kind of like feeding the safety th pin through and back on itself through the loop and once you get going it's much easier so you're going to bunch the fabric up over the safety pin hold on to the safety pin and give it a pull so we're going to go all the way to the end using that method once you get the safety pin through just pull tie back on itself so this is the slightly awkward bit but I so far have never once lost a safety pin in here you kind of want to reach in and feel and open up the safety pin and jiggle it around and if you keep doing this safety pin comes out. I'm going to need to finesse this end a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is use my purple pokey tool, feed that up inside of my tie carefully so that I can make this end look all pretty. That last bit of fabric all the way out. Use the end of your purple pokey tool to kind of bring out the point like so. And then you're going to give this a good press. Well, you're going to repeat those steps for this one and then give them both a good press with the seam along the bottom. I'm jumping around again because I want to try something a bit different. So I have interfaced my facing and I'm now going to finish the curvy edge with... You guessed it, bias binding. So to start with, I have sewn the right side of the binding to the wrong side of the facing and I have matched up the raw edges and I have just very gently eased it around all of the curves. So what we need to do now is fold our bias binding back on itself and top stitch it down. I'm gonna do that with my blind hem foot and I like to use my blind hem foot because it has this guide here which I can run up against the edge of the binding. I've moved my needle all the way over to the left so that I'm guaranteed to catch the binding and then I'll have a nice even top stitching all the way around and I'll show you what I'm doing as I go. Okay, so again, doing this through, through the viewfinder is interesting. So what I am doing, I'm not pinning this, but with my right hand, I am pushing the fabric down and then with my left hand, I'm pushing the binding down 
and then as I say I'm using the edge of my foot as a guide against the edge of the binding to give myself a nice neat finish. Now take your time when you're going around the corners and the curves because the bias binding is cut on the bias, clues in the name, it will conform to what you want it to do if you're gentle with it. So I need to give it a good press to make that edge nice and crisp, but I have my facing. And I also like this method for facings because it will give this a little bit of weight with this edge and hopefully that will help it stay inside of the garment rather than flipping outside. But it is a back facing, so fingers crossed that will work. Here we go, it's all nice and pressed, lying nice and flat. So the next thing I'm going to do is work on the back panels. Okay, so the first thing it wants us to do is stay stitch side edges of side back above lower notch. So I'm going to stay stitch from the top shoulder seam all the way down to the lower notch on both of my side backs and I'm going to do that at half an inch into the seam allowance. Our seam allowance is five eighths of an inch. I am going to be French seaming this these princess seams which is possible and I will show you how I do that when I get there. First thing you want to do when you're French seaming a princess seam or a curved seam like this is you're going to sew the, your pieces together wrong sides together which there you go, wrong sides together. And this time, rather than do it at a quarter of an inch, you're actually gonna do it at three eighths of an inch. And the reason that we're gonna do that is that we're gonna then sew the final piece at a quarter of an inch, which will allow our seam to bend around the curves very nicely without having to clip into it. This is slightly more difficult because you really do have to trim these this seam allowance very nice and closely. And then when you're sewing your quarter of an inch, you need to make sure that everything is encased, but it is very doable. And I learned this technique from a By Hand London blog post. I've sewn one side, I'm gonna do the other, and then I'll trim them, press them, and turn them so that I can sew them again at a quarter of an inch. After sewing my seams at three eighths of an inch, I have then trimmed them down to one eighth or just under one eighth of an inch left. So I'm now gonna go and press this with the right sides together so I can finish this French seam at a quarter of an inch all the way down. Once you've pressed it so that you've got the right sides together and you've got the crease of your previous stitching right in there and that's our stay stitching from earlier that you can see here. You then want to sew your seam at a quarter of an inch to enclose all the raw edges that we have left exposed on the right side of the garment. To sew at a quarter of an inch I like to have my regular presser foot on and then I move my needle over to the right so that it's in the quarter of an inch from the edge of the presser foot. My presser foot is three eighths of an inch from this edge to where the needle goes down in the center. So if I move it over the correct amount, I can be sewing at a quarter of an inch. I like to do this because I prefer sewing with all of the presser foot on the fabric rather than the fabric being at the quarter of an inch mark. I find that it can sometimes get sucked down into the feed dogs through this stitch plate. Now I know you can get stitch plates and I have a stitch plate that has a small hole. So you can get a stitch plate like this and there's the small hole there. The other one that I'm using at the moment has a large hole there which allows for the sideways motion stitches and this is obviously just a straight up and down stitch. This is also for, if I held it the right way that would help as well. This is also for embroidery. I'm just being lazy and I find that this way moving my needle over and using the whole of the presser foot on the fabric makes, makes it so that the, this fabric doesn't get sucked down into the feed dogs. But if you have a stitch plate which looks like this, this is another way of sewing fine fabrics close to the edge without them getting sucked into the feed dogs. Once you've sewn your final seam at a quarter of an inch, you'd want to just double check and make sure that everything is nice and caught and there are no fraying bits or little stray threads poking out from your seam. So we're going to go and press this. The pattern does say open, I'm going to press it towards the side seams. I want to try something different for attaching the bodice and bodice lining. The way that they do it is is fine and, and, and will, will definitely work but it does involve some slip stitching towards the end which again is fine and does work but I'm not a fan of if I can finish it by machine I just feel like it feels to me like it, it would be more secure than my hand stitching so what I'm going to try is a little bit different I'm going to sew one set of the bodice fronts to the shoulder seams of the back that I've just finished which is why I've done the back first and then I'm going to set sew another set of bodice fronts to the facing 
which is why I've also finished the facing and then put those on the same way I do with most linings. Fingers crossed it will work, we shall soon find out. Now before you take your pattern pieces off you want to make sure to mark all of the different markings that we need to have as registration points for later. So there's a small circle and a small circle just over here which is going to be easing this length in to the top of the bodice. We also want to mark the centre front because that's where our stitching will start and stop and I have done that by putting a pin through the mark and then using my friction pen to make marks. So I'm going to do that for this other point here. I am going to mark the square but I don't think I'm going to use it but it will be good to have it if I do need to unpick things and do things the way that the pattern actually suggests. Make sure you've got all your notches and markings transferred over to your fabric before you take your pattern piece off. Okay so I have the back panel that we've just sewn the French seams in the princess seams and I have the two front pieces and I have matched up the shoulder seams and I've matched up the notches on the front with the seam of our princess seam on the back. So I'm going to sew that 5 eighths of an inch and I'm going to do exactly the same process with the facing and the remaining two front panels and I'll show you that when I get there. I'm now repeating the same process sewing the facing to the two lining front pieces. You want to make sure that you have the centre fronts together, line up the notches on the shoulder seams and then sew a 5 eighths of an inch. I'd sewn the shoulder seams together and then I've pressed them open. I've then matched up the seams there and the notches along the front and up to the large circles and I'm going to be back stitching at the large circles and I'm going to sew the whole way around this neckline from large circle to large circle with 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I've sewn around the neckline and the next thing that we want to do is under stitch all of the seam allowance to the facing side so this side and I'm doing that I have my regular presser foot on and it has a mark down the middle which I'm lining up with this line of stitching here. I've actually moved my needle over two ticks so that I am sewing close to but not on that line of stitching and I've got all of the seam allowance pressed, well I've got all the seam allowance finger pressed towards the lining and the facing side. I haven't gone through and pressed this as yet because I prefer to do that after I've understitched and we are going to need to clip our curves around the neckline which I'm going to do with my pinking shears but again I prefer to do that once I've understitched. I have understitched everything and then I have trimmed back my seam allowance quite severely with my pinking shears because as I say that will help this curved line nice and flatly. So I'm now going to go and press this and I'm going to press it from the understitching side first so that I can get a nice crisp finish on this neckline. Well, I've pressed my neckline so now I have my arms seams pinned together and I have matched up this, the centre seam, I've matched up the notches and I've actually overlapped the lining by about an eighth of an inch and that just helps when you sew it turn it through it helps the lining to roll towards the inside so I'm going to sew all the way around here at five eighths of an inch and then I'm going to use my pinking shears to clip into all the curves and then we can pull it through from the back to the front this time and fingers crossed that will finish off the arm seams nicely so we can attach the front skirt and then sew the side seams together. Okay so I've sewn the armhole at five eighths of an inch and then I have trimmed off the excess using my pinking shears as I say that helps you notch these curves and will help the curves lie flatly. So I'm now going to turn this through. Okay, so you're going to want to reach in to the side, the, the sleeve or the strap and you're going to want to reach from the back to the front because we're going to need to pull this through itself and uh, turning a cat, turning a, uh, pulling an elephant through a cat flap as Claire has many times said and I have repeated many times on my channel. So we're going to pull this through. So this works because one of the, fr either the front or the back has not been sewn together at the centre back or the centre front. So obviously the centre front for this dress as the back is cut on the fold. So there we have one nicely finished armhole. So I'm just going to do the second one. And again, you're going to reach through from the back to pull the bodice through that strap and this is just a way of finishing the armholes by machine that I particularly like. The method in the pattern works just as well but as I say if I can avoid slip stitching I will because I just feel that machine stitching is more secure and that's just my preference so that's how I am doing it for this one. 
there we go so we now have a nicely finished neckline and nicely finished armholes so I need to go and give these a really good press make sure everything's lying nicely and f nice and flatly because we sewed our lining a little bit further out it should help it to roll towards the inside but again don't worry too much about that because we are using the same fabric for the lining and the outer it's not going to be very obvious at all right so I'm going to go get that pressed and then I can start working on the skirt front if you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comments section down below and I will do my best to answer them for you. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!